Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast. My name is Jason Rothman. Oh, yes! <laughs> As always, I'm joined by the comparably professional Chris Schaefer. Chris, how's it going? Yes, I'm wearing a collar today. I am professional for the next 30 minutes. So, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we've got, got some got some great topics you know we have great topics every day but today is just a great topic you know yes and today's great topic as always is brought to you by directive consulting we thank them for supporting today's episode they are the go-to b2b and enterprise search marketing agency if you're a b2b out there if you're an enterprise and you're looking for an agency that can do it all work with you and actually get results landing pages, organic SEO, pay-per-click, AdWords and Bing. We recommend Directive Consulting. You can get a free custom proposal at directiveconsulting.com. Links are in the description, and we recommend that you guys check them out, and we thank them for supporting today's episode. Yeah, Chris, a um, lot to talk about here. Very special episode. Now, Chris, I don't use Twitter as the way other people use Twitter. I just use it as like a press release bulletin. But that doesn't mean mm -hmm. I don't type out tweets probably twice a week and then not post them. Um, Delete them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't post it. And smart. I even, I even posted this on the Facebook page for our show last night. And then I deleted it five seconds later because I, I don't know. You just like, you have a thought and then yeah. you're like, okay, you I'm going to tell it to the world. And then you're like, well, what if they don't take it that way? And then you're like, well, why am I telling the world when I have a podcast and I can just talk about it then? Yeah. And why do I feel this need to be people in real connection? Um, not a big social media fan, Chris, but uh, but we know you are. Um, we know you're on Instagram all day long. Um, no, that's, not, <laughs> that's definitely not true. I hate, I hate Instagram and Facebook. I am a fan of Twitter. Let it be known I am a fan of Twitter. Thank you know you, why you're Jason. not on Instagram, Chris? Uh because you're married. my face oh yeah there you go that's you know why true. i'm not on instagram chris because i'm have a long-term girlfriend who i will marry long-term girlfriend yeah that's, mm, okay uh, I'll, you can prove you can show us someday you can show us that she means something oh i'll bring to her in that's here true. uh she's in the bath right now by the way everybody um wow. but chris uh, I was going to post this and then i thought about it i just said on the show but my point was this episode might be the most consequential information I share ever on this episode and mm -hmm. the most, most important episode I've ever done. Um, and also, I want to say that 95% of listeners to 99% might just think, okay, that's somewhat interesting and thanks for the information like usual. But for 1% to 5% of them, it'll literally change their life and make them hundreds of thousands of dollars or more uh, maybe millions over the course of their lifetime. And I'm not, I'm not being facetious. Like I really feel strongly about the three things we're going to talk about, hmm. but yeah, I'm, I'm pumping it up, pumping it up. So Chris, <laughs> um, but before we get into our, uh, well, let's get into our review. So, uh, we appreciate you guys reviews on iTunes. Do have a couple reviews on Stitcher, Chris, if you ever make wow. your way over <laughs> to Stitcher. Um, and we appreciate those too. But we uh, today's review of the week comes from iTunes. It's from Merkel B. Uh, they give it five stars, uh, real strategies and examples. Um, I picked up a few tips from this show and have implemented them in my day-to-day -day PPC management. As a freelance PPC manager, being able to hear from other professionals is immensely helpful by either confirming my own strategies or learning about ideas that I might not have discovered on my own. Very, uh, very straightforward uh, to the point review, yeah. Chris. And and I appreciate that. And by the way, I've been getting a little flack because I just make fun of people who take the time to leave us a review and then just totally, you know, take a dump on their grammar or education. But when they <laughs> do have a good review, Chris, like, a, or not yes. a good review, uh, just because they're all good, but the ones we read, but just Graham uh, has good solid grammar i don't i don't there's nothing to say about the grammar when and, it's good grammar even even the title of the review is uh capitalized real strategies and and is lowercase and then examples i mean just just a smart person you can tell by the way they type thanks merkel 
Yeah, thank you for that review. Those help a ton. When you do those, it feeds the algorithms and uh, more people learn about the show. So, Chris, I'm starting to think you're a little bit of fake news. I'm starting to think about your, you're becoming the story yourself and you're not just sharing good stories. I, I'm calling your news into question because this is the mm. third week in a row with our new segment, We Have News. I do. And we go two years and you don't have any news stories. And then all of a sudden we make a segment <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm the star of the show. I'm the news anchor. I get everything I out of talk. my mouth gets credibility. You know, so, Chris, make I the sound. I want my make own the part sound. of the show. Make the sound. <laughs> beep, 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 That's his mating <laughs> call, everybody. So, Chris, we have news, um, apparently. <laughs> and uh, tell me what this news is. Yeah, so we have talked about this many times on the show. Um, when you're creating a display campaign, uh, I know I talk about it in my training. I, I always try and communicate. There is an, a, a hidden option in there. I call it hidden because it's 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 fairly uh, non-obvious. Um, so I'd call it hidden for that purpose. But um, it's called automated targeting, okay? Or at least it was. Automated targeting is essentially uh, a way for Google to allow your remarketing or your display campaign or any anything you're doing on the Google display network um, to go beyond your targeting parameters. So if you're choosing placements, if you're choosing content based on keywords, you're choosing an audience, they say, hey, can we take what we learned from this and go beyond that? And you say, no, you, my recommendation is always to turn it off. And if you want to test something, test it in a controlled environment, not using Google's automated um, uh, targeting system. Okay, so it's basically just an off switch. Small bit of news here, but basically the, they've changed it. You will no longer see target, automated targeting as a, an option anymore. It's now called targeting expansion. And targeting expansion has a nice little slider on it that goes from the off position all the way up to more reach. And I do air quotes on that um, because that, that's literally what they call it. They just call it from off to more reach. And essentially, my official recommendation as half of the paid search podcast is to leave it off. Uh, slide it all the way to the left. Look for that when you're building a remarketing campaign. Look for that when you're building a new display campaign. Just to restate what it is, it goes beyond your specified targeting parameters and use some either conservative or aggressive targeting beyond those measures to see what else they can find. So it could increase your impression volume by millions. Mm. But maybe you are very careful about what you build in your remarketing campaign or your display campaign, and you don't want Google to do that. So there is your helpful beep, 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 beep news for the, for the day. And Jason gets the other 90% of the podcast today. So there you go. It's fun to talk There's, to you guys. Um, wow. <laughs> Whoa. Do they, do they <laughs> offer like uh, online therapy for podcast partners or something? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, but I think they got in trouble on YouTube. You just loaded up that shotgun full of pas passive yeah, aggressiveness and just blasted <laughs> it all over my face, Chris. So um, so are you saying that it used to be, uh, or at least in the new interface, it used to be automated targeting, no automated targeting, conservative automation, or aggressive, and they've changed that just to a bar that goes from off hmm. to more reach with like five levels of aggression, basically? Yep. Leave it all the way to the left. That's exactly so it. you're it's just, it's just change the way they they change the layout is so all. They change the but layout. It's still the same idea. They change and the name, change the layout. Still same idea. Now, when you start a display campaign, do they have it default set to all the way off? Do you think? No, they don't. No, it's not. No, it's it's Whoa. set to the very first one uh, to the right, which is which is standard because Dipping previously, your toes in the water. yeah, previously the old one. Um, was set to conservative aut automation by default. So that's why I always bring it up. There's an additional step to turn that oh, off. So it's not okay. something that you just can ignore. You have to actively turn it off. So if you, if by default, it's turned on. So let me just read their little thing there because we always pick each other's ideas apart and that's what makes the show uh, strong is, is we're trying to get the best uh, performance possible here. And just to play uh, the devil's advocate, 
Uh, reach more users by letting Google look for high-performing audiences similar to your target. Expanding reach can increase impressions, clicks, and conversions. You're telling me, the great Chris Schaefer, you think that's a bad thing, getting more conversions. Uh, <laughs> excellent devil's advocate there. What a great way to frame that argument. I'm just asking. I, of course, of course like it's Chris, not bad to get more conversions. <laughs> but but the thing is, whenever you do, Jason, you know as well as I, there is a limitless limitless number of impressions on uh, on Google, and um, it is better to test within a facility of control rather than let Google test something where you have no control. And I think the best example of this is remarketing. If you have a remarketing audience of two thousand people. Mm -hmm. Why let Google do conservative automation or reach beyond your 2000 uh, audience list to reach people that are not part of your remarketing list? I mean, that's that that seems like it's counterintuitive. Remarketing lists can cost 50 bucks a month, you know, I mean, to advertise and get several thousand impressions of people that have been to your website. You turn this on, suddenly you're going to get $300 worth of spending uh, that's outside of remarketing list. That's no longer remarketing. That is called display targeting. So, No, I, 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 I'm in agreement with you, Chris. I, I think my, my default setting when I set up a display campaign is whatever kind of targeting I'm using, that's the kind of targeting I want to use, and I want to try that. And so I set it to off as well. Um, now, if we have problems and we're not getting enough, we can raise it up. But and and I have tried that in the past, and I'm open to trying it and, and using the targeting expansion. But my problem with it, Chris, is like you said, if I turn it up and I go from level zero to level one or level one to level four, how do I know which results that came in were from that oh, yeah. audience expansion? And it sure What's would changing? be. Yeah, what's changing and what came in that's different and how is that different new traffic performing? So if they had some kind of way to segment out the data, like this was the first tier of aggression that you got extra. These are the impressions you got from them. These are the conversions, all that kind of stuff. This is the second tier. Um, I think that would go a long way to uh, okay. having people like us who really want to control things being open to using it more and more. Yeah, when there's no deer, I think you're exactly right. It's not that I'm against using Google Automation. I'm against uh, information and 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 spending money when there's no data to back up where it went or how it worked or what the performance was. So yeah, that's uh, that's it. Okay, well that's great news, Chris. Um, thank you for sharing that, and people can uh, be beep, sure beep, to beep, look beep, for that. Beep, beep. <laughs> it's mating penguin mating call. So yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll see what on. the what the news brings in next week because you know. There's going to be some news. Um, now, Chris, hey, man, uh, you know, we're, we're, we uh, we each come up with different episodes and, and topics so people can get a flavor for uh, uh, both of us and all that kind of stuff. And, and two minds are better than one. But I, I want you to do the majority of the talking here. I, I don't have anything to say, basically. Like, um, <laughs> I, I don't have anything to say. That's the point of this episode. Uh, let me look back at the current working titles. We'll, we'll see if we leave it that way. Uh, Google ad search campaigns are easy three things. Um, we'll see what we do with that title. But my overall point, Chris, is search campaigns are easy. Um, I've developed a feel for them in instinct, and I'm sure you have too. Um, it really is easy when, when I'm looking at data and I know when you're looking at data, it's, it's so easy is the wrong word. Cause it didn't, it wasn't ever, it was, it wasn't easy from the start, but we've developed a skill set and the skill set to me at least is based on three things and if you do these three things you can't go wrong and i'm going to say like 99 percent of what i do are these three things and then people are going to say well what about ad copy what about extensions well yeah i test out ad copy i look for low performing ads yeah i add ad extensions okay but day to day trying to make my clients money these are the only things i think about um, and I wanted to just run that theory by you and then see if you think I'm overstating things or kind of see how you deal with these three things. But first, I just want to start off with a quote. People related to Einstein. I've never seen where that comes from, so I don't even know. If, but it, it's basically someone said there's five levels, ascending levels of intelligent, intellect, smart, intelligent, brilliant, genius. 
And then the smartest thing ever is simple. Beyond all that, there's simplicity. And that's all it is. So how do I manage Google Ads campaigns, make clients money, um, and and make people money? It cost per click and spending their full budget. And we can talk about each one and how we do things, but just overall, um, 99% of your brain goes to those three things. Mine does. Does it, does it work that way for you too? Yeah. Uh, I, I, so, so that's the big three. That's, that's what you're saying is, you know, what, what, what 90% of AdWords boils down to is your search terms, your cost per click and your, what was the last one? Spending the full budget. Spending full budget. In terms okay. of now spending the full budget, let's just finish with this. Let's start with the finish here because we're going to go deep on these two topics, search terms and cost per click. But spending the full budget, um, all I have there is spending the full budget. It's one of the major goals. It's one of the three things I think about. People give me a budget and our job is to get them the most we can from that budget. It's not as sexy as the first two. There's not as much to talk about. Um, really, the only thing advice is that Pay attention to your search impression share columns, search impression share loss due to budget, search impression share loss due to ad rank. Um, we've broken those down and we'll break them down in future episodes, I'm sure, and you can read about them online. But but, but just people give me a budget and if someone tells me, hey, I want to spend $1,000, like it bothers me if we spend 800 It bothers me if uh, they have the ability to spend 1500 and I don't tell them. Um, so I just like hitting the budget and I like keeping clients informed about the budget because the whole goal of you and me doing our job is to bring clients leads that they can convert into sales and make money and do it profitably with Google ads. So if we can do that profitably, we have to tell them and try to encourage them at least that, hey, if you're spending $1,000 and you're doing it profitably, but you could be spending $2,000 and getting double and being even more profitable. That's our recommendation. Now, a lot of clients don't do that, uh, but it's at least a recommendation. And then when they give us $1,000, say, and we're only spending $700, I don't sleep well. I, I want to know why are we not spending $1,000? Can we run more days of the week? Can we run more times? Should I open up the keywords a little bit? Am I missing something? Should I get people who are searching about this location? Does that make sense? And I don't feel comfortable until I've done everything possible to know that I am spent I am doing as much as I can to spend that budget effectively. Um, so just spending the budget. I mean, uh, it's not as as deep as the other two, but it is something I think about quite a bit. And I, I know you do too, Chris, because you you look at the budgets throughout the month and you're adjusting them and, and seeing how much people have left and all that. Yeah. So Jason, well, let's let's get this off the table here. I, I completely agree. Uh, and what I'm going to do in order to make this, you know, rather than just two guys – high-fiving each other and saying, we're right, we're right. Let's talk about any reasons why someone would say this is not necessarily true. And I'll give you one example. I'm going to give you one one example and then the, the, the alternate universe uh, of how it would look the other way around. So let's say advertiser one has great search terms. Jason's number one primary focus, search terms, okay? And quick quick uh, vocabulary lesson, keywords are what we choose as advertisers. You choose a keyword. That's what a broad phrase or exact match term is. It's a keyword search terms for the words that people type into Google. Okay. So just so everyone's clear, that's the, the term that the user types. Okay. So good, clean search terms. Let's say advertiser one has awesome search terms. They are clean. They are focused on the product, the service, whatever that person is trying to advertise. You can look at every one of those and say, that's a good search. That person's looking for what I'm doing, or that person's looking for what I'm selling. Mm -hmm. Clean stuff. No, nothing's off topic. Okay. That's advertiser one. Advertiser one has crappy ads. Okay. They don't put time into their ads. Mm -hmm. Um, Jason, you know as well as I, this is difficult to prove, but you just gonna have to take our word for it. People will click on crappy ads. People will click on something that has absolutely nothing to do with what they're searching with. If it just has like something that says free or buy or official or, you know, something that just kind of looks like it's, or the fact that it's the first ad, it could mm -hmm. say, you know, hey, click here if you like dead puppies and they're going to click it. 
because it's the first thing at the top. Okay, so advertiser A, or advertiser one has crappy ads that have very poor relevancy to the keywords and to the search terms, but their search terms are 100% clear. Advertiser two doesn't pay attention to their keywords. They use all broad match. They have automated bidding. They have everything wrong to try and control their traffic quality. But they have put, wow, they've put a lot of time into their ads. They just have gorgeous variation, great keywords in their ads, but their keyword and their search terms are all over the place. Mm. They are not relevant to what they're selling. They're not relevant to um, what, what, what products they have or what services they're selling. They're just all over the place from, you know, uh, how to buy a car to, you know, looking for a plumber in a small town. I mean, it, all over the place. Jason, which advertiser do you think could be more successful here? I think the answer is simple. I mean, obviously, advertiser one, the one with the clean search terms but crappy ads, is going to be successful despite his crappy ads. His crappy ads can be improved on, but he will still be successful because he has great quality. The other guy, he put all the time into great ad copy and nothing into his quality of traffic, and he fails. I mean, that... And, and, and everything under that, ad extensions, um, I would say even bids, uh, you know, negative keywords, all this, anything under that is secondary because none of that stuff is going to trump um, the, uh, the, uh, the ad copy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd say, I'd say, you know, no, nothing is more important than the ad copy or even the landing page. Right. And uh, now in terms of better performance, to me, it's, advertiser one I, I could literally run uh i get reports every day of what my clients sh show up on and like so mover yesterday local moving companies moving companies okc okay um moving companies in oklahoma city if i get the search terms i get which are those kind of search terms and i have an ad that says we're a bad moving company you don't want to hire us yeah the click to rate will go down if i have ad copy like that but i'll still perform better than that second account with great ad copy and horrible search terms. But here, here's the thing, Chris, which AdWords manager is going to keep that client longer? The first one that's getting great traffic and actual sales mm -hmm. with horrible ads in hypothetically, or the second one where the client sees their beautiful ads when they do searches and they see decent, pretty good quality scores because you've got keywords in there. Who cares if they're broad? They're good. They're decent keywords <laughs> and you have ads that match the keywords. So you're going to have a good quality scores too. So obviously the, the second one's going to have an easier sell and we've taken it to the extreme, but here's the thing, the point I want to make search terms, cost per click, spending the full budget, 99% of what you think about that, what you need to think about. That's it. That's all you need to think about. And someone would say, well, what about the ad copy? If you have bad ad copy, you're going to have bad quality scores. Okay. That's part of the 1% of other stuff I think about. Ad copy. You know what's not that hard, Chris? Yeah. Ad copy. You go in there, right. you edit your ad, you think like a search user, what would I want to see? What can I say based on the client or the business owner's website? I'll pop that in there. I'll make a relevant ad. Oh, I don't have 700 ad groups because I'm not doing skags. I have five because I'm doing relevant keywords grouped together in ad groups like Big G recommends. And it takes me 30 seconds to change ads. And now Having bad ads is no longer a uh, hypothetical that anyone can speak on if you're putting 99% of your time into search terms, cost per click, and spend the full budget because it's not that hard. It's part of the 1% extra stuff uh, you have to do. Now, Chris, getting good search terms, um, it's nice in theory, but how do you actually do it? And so one of the things I wanted to talk about is <laughs> – you still have to develop an instinct and a gut feel for it. So my point, Chris, is you and I could look at search terms and then someone who's newer to AdWords could look at search terms and they could see search terms like moving companies as the search term. And you and I would probably see a yellow light flashing when we see that. We would go, okay, that's relevant. That's not a negative keyword. It's decent, but I'd rather see local moving companies or moving companies in my area or mover, movers in OKC or moving companies in Edmond, Oklahoma, a suburb. Um, so that gut feel and that instinct, um, do you have any thoughts on that? Do you, do you yourself experience that through your training where 
you're training someone and you're breaking down their search terms and you say something's not so great and then client and then uh uh people you're training go well how come that's not good do, do you ever run into in a scenario like that yeah yeah definitely um and most of the time they realize why the keyword is wrong but i'll tell you the the, the times that i often have to bite my my tongue and, and eat my words is when there's something specific about the industry that I don't know about, okay. about the client's product or service or the way that people search. But like, like we're talking about percentages, you know, we're talking about a 10% thing here. I mean, most of the time your searchers are going to be laymen. They're going to be outside of the loop of what you sell. I don't care if you're a doctor or you're selling, um, you know, you're selling shoes People search for the way things that they understand it, not above the you know intellect level of a manufacturer and how he uses it. But it, there's going to be common language. So um, I would say you, most people just overthink it, you know. And, and just like you said, you get a feel for just knowing the right kind of terms and, and seeing what is a good term and being able to eyeball it and said, you know, that that seems like a solid layman type of search looking for and trying to find a solution to his problem that I can, mm -hmm. that I can offer. Yeah. And a couple more points on search terms, Chris, it, one of the things I don't want to do because I am trying to change life with this episode, like I'm trying to convey how strong a skill set it is focusing on these three things and how much you can literally change people's lives by running great ads campaigns and change your own life by doing it for people if you do this stuff correctly and one of the the pitfalls in simplicity is people get lazy and they hear review search terms and then you're like okay yeah like oh, thanks for the advice jason i've been doing that and i'm doing a great job because i look at my search terms every day and when something's a negative i add it and when it's not i i think i think okay that's a great search term thanks google but it's not you can't get lazy. And so one, one of the couple of points I wanted to make, Chris, is that number one, people need to know when I, we're talking great search terms and focusing on that, it's not like going through your search terms list and adding negatives every week. It's like never having a negative keyword to add because your ratio of good to bad search terms is like 97 to 99% out of a hundred. There's always going to be one or two out of a hundred that come through, but you should not be getting bad search terms at all. And if you do, it should be because you're trying to do that with broad keywords for whatever reason you're running them, but it should be a reason why you're getting those. And then the second reason you can't be lazy is because if you're an agency or freelancer like us, you have to study the client's industry and really get a feel for what are the good search terms and, and what kind of keywords you should be adding based on the search terms you're seeing. So white glove movers, Chris, that's an example. How would any, I don't know anybody who knew the term white glove moving uh, before I started working for moving companies. I never heard of that, <laughs> but that's yeah. like one of the best searches a client can get maybe if they do that service. So you really have to dig into a client's industry and almost act like you're going to work in that industry. And then for business owners, and Chris, you must see this all the time, you have to accept that people who are searching are not in your industry most of the time. And you need yeah. to get a feel for the way search users use search terms. Um, and so that's kind of a vice versa uh, thing. You need to kind of become the other person depending on what, um, what part of the role you're stepping in from initially. Um, so studying clients industries, Chris, uh, business owners studying the way people search for things. Um, is that something you cover when you're talking to people? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I think one of the best examples is when you look at your search terms and your keywords and your spend, stop thinking like a marketer and start thinking like an accountant, you know, like was every penny that was spent worth that, you know, right. because there's an endless number of people out there you're, you can spend money. You know, Google does very well because people can spend money. People search and click ads. That's a known fact. So if that's a known fact, you need to be assertive about what you're spending and you can't try and reach everyone all the time. You just have to draw the line at some point. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Now, so, the, yeah, the se second piece of the pie here, Chris, 
people are going to say, and I can already hear them, hey, search terms are great, but what if it's not getting me anything? It's not getting me conversions. And you'll notice I don't put conversions as one of my three most important things. So when I sent you this list originally, did you, uh, did you, uh, did you, uh, um, did you think where are the com conversions initially? Where's the cost per conversion? N no, no. I mean, you, this has actually been something that you've shared with me that's been enlightening to me is the connection between the cost per click and the cost per conversion. I mean, yeah. this is not something that I necessarily figured out on my own because, uh, I mean, your, your background is in numbers and that you've explained it many times on the podcast and it makes sense, but it's not something I had thought about before. So I think the cost per click and, and linking that idea between those two is, is. Yeah. And, and the it, point it's, for it's everybody great. is that conversions, you don't control conversions. You don't control cost per conversion directly. Uh, or I should say conversion rate, conversion rate, cost per conversion, conversions, conversions come out of search terms. Good search terms lead to conversions. They just will. Um, I don't care what anyone says, Chris, if you show up on moving companies, OKC and stuff like that, local moving companies, you're going to get conversions. So if you show up on the right search terms, you're going to get conversions, but then it becomes the cost per conversion. Well, there's no button that says I want a lower cost per conversion. There's some automated strategies that do that. But there's no manual button that says, okay, get my cost per conversion down. It, it's all based on the cost per click. And so yeah. cost per click controls cost per conversion. Different keywords yeah. have different conversion rates. So if you want to control your cost per conversion on all your different keywords, some have better conversion rates, you can bid more. Some have lower conversion rates, you can bid less. How do you do that, Chris, without manual bids at each keyword? Yeah. No, you, you can't. You can't. You, you got to come up with some weird way. And you're exactly right. Manual bids. And people are so scared of them. And listen to what we're saying here. We're talking about it's more more important than your bids is your cost per click. Right. And, and you don't have to. You can't control cost per click. You can just put some bids up. So don't be scared of just putting some bids in. I often get people I'm not ready to start with manual bidding. Yes, you are. Do you have an average CPC? Throw that keyword in there. Or th throw that number in as your manual bid and get started. I mean, something. At least you have some control for once in the campaign rather than automated bidding. I think it's very important. And uh, yeah, there is there is no way to control it with uh, without uh, to control it with 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 a you know the way that you want to control it. Um, you know the way that you want to be able to say I want eight dollar instead of sixteen dollar. I mean, you, there there's no way to do that except for manual. Yeah, and Chris, I I don't. I don't get why people are are so scared of manual and they don't know where to start because it really doesn't matter. Like you just punch in a number and see if you get impressions that day and you have a daily yeah. budget cap set. So you're not going to like spend too much money if you don't want to. And then what I always do is I look at, I, I tie my cost per click bids, my manual bids to my positions. So mm -hmm. if I put in $5 bids and I see positions of four, five, three point five. And I'm not getting in a lot of clicks. I go, okay, that's showing up too low. I'm probably going to need to raise it up to be in position one, position two. But that's not a hard rule because if you're running a national campaign and you're spending thirty dollars a day, you can probably spend it in position four. Um, yeah. But right. it, it just is up to your individual account. But I've always just, I've always just focused on manual bids. And sometimes I get away from them. Sometimes you and I on the show talk about automated adjust automated bidding and it has its place sometimes but i've i i just always find myself coming back to manual bids chris and um the the genesis of these three thoughts search terms cost per click because it controls the cost per conversion and spending the full budget um my focus on those chris has been as just kind of a counter reaction to the bombardment I get of digital marketing advertising. Um, yeah. And I don't want to make any enemies. So I'm not going to say terms here, but you guys know all the ones uh, you see the ads for different fads that come up, different types of products. And they all sound so cool, Chris, but when I'm there day to day making clients a ton of money and in a, a byproduct of that doing well myself, all I'm doing, Chris, every day is looking at search terms 
managing my bids. And a lot of work goes from that. I, I find new keywords to add. I find new negatives with the cost per click, with the bids. I, I increase those bids. I decrease those bids. And I break things out into their own ad groups sometimes and all that kind of stuff. But 99% of the focus is on getting good search terms and knowing how to get them, cost per click, manual bids, and, and making your performance do what you want it to do by controlling the bids manually and spending the full budget. It's so simple, but if you and I, we can't monetize it because we're not going to, well, what are we going to write a 10 page book and sell that? No. Uh, what are we going <laughs> to make a, a software that charges a hundred dollars a month and, and the software just tells you search terms and cost per click? No, it's, it's one of those things where the simple option is the most effective, but it's not the most promoted because there's not a way to make it's great money from it. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't sound sexy. It doesn't sound as sexy as skags. You know, it doesn't sound as sexy as super complex algorithms that 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 use scripts and and pretty sh charts to make decisions about things. It just doesn't sound as good. So, Jason, I I like it. Um I I think I I appreciate the honesty and I hope that like you said, you know, the 1 to 5% of listeners out there realize what we're talking about. I hope it and, clicks you know, for people. Yeah, I hope so. It's solid stuff. I mean, and we're telling the truth here. I mean, we're yeah, like you the, say, the, the we go on the internet and show it, and just stand stand on the internet naked and just say this is this is the truth. This is literally what we do. There's no magic. You don't have to read a hundred page book about skags to be successful on on AdWords. Yeah, and I don't want to. I don't want to leave people with the impression that it's. Um, that you're not doing anything when you do this three tier strategy, there's a lot of work to do, but it, it yeah. it's work that flows because it's like it, you, you develop a skill set, And once you have that skill set and the instinct, it, it be easy is a word with a lot of feelings built into it, but it becomes easy, which is a good thing. Um, to be honest, like I, I don't, clients don't want me like struggling over their campaigns. They want me to figure it out and, and get them the right traffic that makes them money. So there is a lot of work to do, but when you do the work this way, this focused, it becomes easy once you develop that skill set. And um, I think I'll just leave the listeners, Chris. There's a lot that goes into each of these uh, first two things for sure, search terms and cost per click. And we can't get it all out in one episode, but the main point is just the word focus. Week to week, make your focus on your search terms and work from there. Make your focus on your cost per click. So when you are talking with the client, why is my cost per conversion 40 when I need to be 20? Don't think about cost per conversion. Immediately start thinking about how you can work your bids to get that down. So um, that's it, Chris. It, it's the it's the easy approach to search campaigns, and I think it's the most effective thing. So I wanted to share that with you guys today. Um, we want to thank Directive Consulting for supporting today's episode, B2B, Enterprise Search Marketing Agency, SEO, pay-per-click landing pages. You want someone who can put it all together and do that kind of campaign for you. We recommend Directive, directiveconsulting.com. They offer free custom proposals. You can uh, tell them the paid search podcast guy sent you. Um, and you can reach Chris at chrisschafer.com. And you can reach me at rothmanppc.com. And we'll be back. <laughs> He's so embarrassed. He's so embarrassed. He's so embarrassed. But Chris, I, you know, I just don't like being, you know, it, it's tough to be a salesman. You know, oh, you're trying to be honest. I don't like my promoting myself. I go on YouTube it's, every week and well, do there's it. Some, there's I don't a like promoting between myself. I have being a big super Google honest about platform. stuff and then promoting it and then promoting your service afterwards, you know. But hey, you, I appreciate you mentioning my my website, chrisshafer.com. Yeah, and you know, Chris, I try to help you with that website. I give you edit tips like I did yeah. last night because I'm I'm looking out for you. Um, <laughs> but we'll be back uh, next uh, next Monday with the next episode of the paid search. I just want my time and the light to continue, but uh, I'll end it here. Podcast. <laughs> <End it. laughs>